Hello fellow heroes and welcome back for today's Honda build which I'm proud to show off. Today's build is focusing on none other than the Caliban's Hand Exotic which has been making rounds on social media as to how truly good they are. I was hesitant at first when I got them as I didn't feel all that great upon using them and felt rather lacklustre. However, upon watching Cool Guys break down the Exotic and how to build into them correctly, my eyes were open as to the possibilities of what it could do. So I've done a bit of research and pulled off what I consider is the best build to use if you want non-stop ignitions per knives. It really is great as many content creators have mentioned and as long as you don't go into endgame with this, you're going to be in for a shock of your life. But you know what else will ignite your passion for the exotic? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future. It goes a long way for me. To start with the subclass, we will be using Blade Barrage like always as it's got great damage and flexibility for all content. So to make the build as destructive as possible, you're going to need to focus on your melee, dodge and how many ignitions you want to pack. But overall you want to build it into getting your melee back in case in terms of throwing your throw knives, they don't either kill or they completely miss on target. Trust me on this as you're going to miss quite a few shots and see how much this can be annoying to recover quickly. So for aspects, we have On Your Marks, where getting a precision kill will grant you and allies a boost in handling and reload speed. We then have Knock Em Down, which allows our blade barrage to produce more projectiles, but also allows us to get our knives back if we are radiant and get a kill with them. For Fragments, we have Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorch Combatants grants us melee energy, Ember of Ashes, which grants us more Scorch stacks on targets, Ember of Sindering, where your class ability recharges faster on Scorch targets, Ember of Wonder, where rapidly defeating combatants with ignitions will produce an orb of power, and then Ember of Solace, where Radiant and Restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. For stats, we have 18 Resilience, 17 Recovery, 18 Discipline, and 17 Strength. Although we will be using Acrobat's Dodge quite a bit, and we only have 20 Mobility, this isn't a huge issue as long as you have Sky Burners and make sure you are using your grenades and melee accordingly. You will see throughout the content how I'm able to make full use of this and utilize my fragments to the fullest. For key mod now, you'll want melee wall maker for creating wells via melee, powerful wells for creating two elemental wells, font of wisdom for a plus 15 in intellect stat, radiant light for plus 20 in strength and allow others to become charged with light, and well of ordnance which will grant me a bit of extra towards my grenades upon well collection. This is generally all you will need to create a non-stop charge melee build that will always allow you to cause a chain reaction once your knives ignite. You see, as long as I'm radiant, I will trigger knock them down secondary effect, which will allow us to get our knives back as long as we net a kill of them. With this being the case, all we need to do is activate Acrobat's dodge or radiant orb and then start firing away. With this neat combo, you can keep throwing your knives and resetting your timer to always have infinite knives available. You just need to make sure you keep an eye on the time in case things do end up going bad. Now your weapons for here will need to be able to produce scorch damage onto anyone in flicks as this will mold back into your build. For our primary we have the submission submachine gun with encore and demolitionist and suits the playstyle of the build quite well for how much you'll be moving about and using your grenades here and there. You don't need to have a weapon with demo on to make this setup work and to be honest any weapon here is good to be used. So alternatively, a stasis fusion rifle with chill clip is probably the best thing you want to aim for if you don't have a specific primary in mind. A secondary, I have the Skyburner's Oath Exotic for allowing me to quickly get my melee and class ability back through a scorch effect applied to targets. Now I did try to use Prometheus Lens with the build since a lot of the mods this season focus on them a lot, but upon using it I noticed that a scorch effect wasn't really working as well for getting my mini energy back. It worked fine for getting my class ability back, but anything else was just left behind. This is why I chose to use Skyburners as it does notable work on my melee and class ability, and is also fairly good in terms of damage against all. Also, we can proc initians via just the weapon alone after a few shots, so that's also a pro in my book. For heavy, we do have the Storm Chaser Linear Fusion, which is great for building up damage quickly and a short time frame. Although it's arc and not so the base though. If you want to add in front of Might to build then I suggest you use the Cataclysmic Linear Fusion from the Raid if you've got one already. If not, then generally any heavy of your choice is fine here as we won't be using heavy too much within the build. For stats, we want to spread our stats out so that we can cover near everything if possible. Now this isn't because we'll be using this in end game, but rather so that our ability can rely on each other when we completely use up everything. 
How to go about this is down to the user as you may want to invest in just discipline and strength, and there is no downside to doing just that. You just need to make sure that the subclass and all items used are the same, and then you can expand on your abilities how you see fit. If we take our strength as a start, we can see that I have left it at 70, even though this could easily go to 100. Only reason I chose not to do so is because we already have fragments in place that allow us to get our abilities back fairly quickly. If you have the Ember Serum Fragment attached and then use Sky Burners, this should be all you need in terms of recovering lost energy. I have also added on the Hammer Scythe mod times 2 and Invigoration mod so that every time we create all the power, we will get around a 20% mini energy back. This may sound small, but considering how often you'll be creating orbs of power, this can be a very huge deal. Now for your discipline, we have ours at 80 and this can be reduced if you don't plan on using your grenade so often. Getting it down to 70 or even 60 is fine, but ideally you want to have this ability relatively on the same level as melee, so you can for example weaken a major and then use your throwing knife to trigger a huge ignition blast afterwards. If that's not needed, then you can reduce it, or use the healing grenades instead for longer survivability. But lastly, we have resilience at 80, and this can honestly be left here, or expanded on up to 100 for a 40% damage reduction. If you have the slots or armor pieces to do so, then I would recommend you get as high as possible, but if not, don't worry about it. For leftovers, we have Harmonic Cypher mod, which will allow matching elemental weapons with subclass to create orbs of power. Linear Scavenger mod for more reserved ammo, Solar Formation for increasing the radius and damage of our ignitions, and then lastly, Radiant Orb where collecting the orb power makes you radiant. Now, as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Discipline, Homework Siphon Times 2, Melee Wellmaker mod, Arm, we have Strength, Fastball, and Powerful Well mod, Chest, we have Strength, Kakas of Damna, Arm of the Dying Sun, and Thunder Wisdom mod, Leg with Mind of Zillions, Linear Fusion Scavenger, Invigoration and Radio Light mod. Mark with Mind of Zillions, Radiant Orbs, Solar Formation and Well of Ordnance mod. So I now know why everyone is saying the Caliban Hand is an amazing exotic to use for this season and probably next after. What you have been seeing is me using my knives and getting a kill with them to trigger mass ignitions that pretty much wipe out rooms with its large blast radius. All you need to do is have the following requirements. Be radiant, have a full charge melee, and don't miss. Doing all of these will allow you to pop off against a wave of rank and fire combatants, and the results are amazing when you're not competing with others to truly show off its worth. Anyone can do this, and half the things shown with the customization of the build isn't required if you lack the mods to do so. For example, you don't need to have the key mods that I showed earlier in the video, as all they do is provide an additional layer of fun for what we're doing. The key result of the build is defined by the subclass, fragments, and aspect, and having Skyburners over available, and that's really it. This should be good news for those that have just got into Destiny and have the following exotics, but not the mods available, and until Bungie makes it freely accessible for all to get whatever mods they are missing, this is how I hope to make the new players' lives a bit more easier. However, there is a downside for using such a build, and I've found that it's not applicable to be used in-game whatsoever. You can use this in legendary content, but anything higher than that, and anything that requires match game, and that's where the build starts to fall apart. I noticed that the combatants are a lot more tanky to face than normal, and this makes it even more harder to do a one combo on them, and be successful to doing so. Yes, you can recover quickly via your weapons mods, but if you're going to be facing them a lot, then there is no point at all of using it in these type of environments. I wholeheartedly avoid higher tier content for something like this, as it's too painstaking to use at times, but you can still use them if you wish in these areas, as long as you're able to counter the many issues that master and above content will bring. If you've been hesitant on using Caliban's hand, then hopefully this video should be able to help you decide whether to invest in them or not. If not, then there are plenty of other builds available that I'm sure from my vast collection can help you onwards. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you like that kind of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.